Hi everyone, Jill here. Welcome to my channel. If you have sent back, I would say more than three wigs and you have yet to keep one, this video is for you. So what is going on? We need to figure this out. A gal had emailed me several weeks back and she had sent back, I think it was either seven or 10 wigs and had yet to keep any of them. That to me is a big, huge red flag and we need to sort this out and figure out why this is happening. So these are wigs from very well-known brand names. They're not Amazon wigs or wigs that you'll find advertised on Facebook, Instagram, all of those scam places where they show you beautiful wigs at an unbelievable price. And you decide, you know, I'm going to give this a shot and you get it and it's a piece of crud. Not talking about that. These are legitimate, beautiful wigs and kind of I'm sure all over the place when it comes to the budget, but they're brand names that we all know and purchased from websites that we all shop from safely. And yet she had yet to find one that she liked. So my very first troubleshooting question is, have you measured your head and have you measured it correctly for wigs? I'm going to link the John Renault How to Measure Your Head for Wigs video here on YouTube down in the description box as well. That's the one that I think is very clear, it's very concise, and it's, it's really well done. Just for the sake of this video, normally if you feel very wiggy in all of your wigs, I want to rule out that you're not a true petite. Because if you're a true petite, every wig that you wear, for the most part, depending on the brand, is going to legitimately look wiggy on you. So I want to rule that out first. I always use the example of my daughter Hannah who is a petite little gal anyway, but she also has a very true petite size head. We'll sometimes have fun and we'll try on my wigs on her and they always and just absolutely overtake her even something that is very low density um, and would look very natural on most all of us, on her, it's going to look very wiggy because she is a petite. It doesn't look wiggy because it's unnatural looking, like, you know, it doesn't have certain features. It's just a lot. It does not fit her head properly. So that is the very first thing that you need to rule out if you are a true petite. I have to say there has been a very little handful of times that I have put a wig on my head out of the box and fell in love with it and just went, wow, this I love. Very few times. I'm telling you, hardly ever happens. But occasionally you can look forward to those moments when that will happen. But for the most part, strike that out of your head because generally you will never like a wig 100% right out of the box on your head. I'm talking about taking it, setting it on your head. It's got the crisscross part. It hasn't even been even shaken out because you don't know yet, right? We can't do too much if we think we may want to return it. So we're looking at it on our heads and we're going, Ugh. I'm telling you, there aren't very many wigs that you're going to go, oh, I love it right away. Now, eventually you'll get to know what brands that you like, and it won't take much before you do realize when you have it on your head that, okay, I'm not liking it now, but I know I can work with this. I know I'm going to like it. So you immediately start zhuzhing it up and playing with it and fluffing it up and even perhaps using a little hairspray here and there to get it to look and feel like it's a part of you. But in the very beginning, you're very new. You don't know what it's supposed to feel like. You don't know even maybe how it's supposed to feel as in the security of it. Is it staying on your head? What does it mean when it rides up in the back? Why can't I keep this wig on my head? Until you figure that out, 
there's not much more you can do until you can get the wig securely and comfortably on your head because you can't really play with it if it's falling off and you know it's just nearly impossible to get a good feel for that wig until you figure out how to get it to stay on your head. So let's cross that off our list. Let's say that no, you found that a wig grip works for you and you wear wig grips just to maybe even try on your wigs like I do. Um, I'll use wig grips for wig chats when I know I'm gonna be switching out wigs and I need to do it quickly, then a wig grip it is. Yeah. Is it the color? I know if I am not liking that color at all, there's not a whole lot that is going to happen for me to really like that wig. The color is important. You can be on the brink of, well, I think I could like it. That's fine, that could be a keeper. But if you full on look at that color, especially when you have it on your head, because I do recommend still, don't just look at the color in the box and go, ooh, actually put it on. You might be surprised that it brightens your complexion. It's a color you never would have imagined, but you kind of like it once you get it on and close to your, you know, your face. But if you absolutely, you get it on, you're like, oh no, and you've got your makeup on, because that's really important too. Make sure you put makeup on. Get yourself looking good and feeling good, and then try on your wigs. Never try on a brand new wig without makeup. If you normally wear makeup, you need to have your makeup on. You know you're not a petite size. You've got your makeup on. You've got your wig grip on or you've secured it in a way that works for you, you can mess with it around. And you like the color pretty much, but yet you feel like it is completely wiggy and ridiculous. Take the wig back off. You got your makeup on, right? That's important. But take your wig off, take it off, hold it by the nape, and just shake it, okay? You, you can just kind of do this. You can do this. Just get those fibers upside down and off the cap because we have no idea how long that's been in the box. It could have been sitting there for a very long time. And you know, they try their hardest to, to sort of ship the wig and put that wig in a box in such a way that it will be okay, but inevitably there's gonna be some sort of box hair. And box hair can hang around longer than just one day. It, it may be there for a while. But doing this and kind of shaking it and getting those fibers does two things. It does help box hair and it revives the memory. If this is a synthetic wig, they have styles that have a memory. And that memory starts right here in the cap. That cap construction, how it's done, is what really gives the memory to that style, which is awesome. Synthetic wigs are pretty cool that way. But, so that is going to sort of kind of engage that memory, that style, and yes, when you flip it over, it's gonna be a little crazy. Um, you can always kind of shake it back down this way before you then go ahead and put it back on your head. I recommend doing that uh, once you are like, mm -hmm, I love this color, you know, and I think I'm gonna like this. Um, and definitely give it a good shake. Now, put it back on your head. You know, that's gonna do one or two things. If there's permatease in there, it's gonna activate that a little bit, and then it may even grow a little bit more but you can start moving things around with your fingers um, and just feel, treat it like your own head of hair. So you've done that, you got it back on and you're still feeling like this thing is way too wiggy. All right, let's go ahead and figure something else out. Did you choose a style that does have a lot of permatease? A little permatease is all right, you know? Um, I think that a little permatease actually is very beneficial to the style and it's gonna be helpful for you. It's gonna keep the fiber sort of up and off the cap in the certain areas that are usually very becoming to you and the style. But if it's a style that has a lot of permatease and you will know the difference eventually as you uh, sort of progress in your wig journey, uh, that's a little different. I think you need to sort of stay away from certain styles that do have a lot of wooly thick permatease. If I started, I think my wig journey with one of those styles, I, hmm, I think it would have set me off on so much of a wrong foot. I may not have decided to continue. Um, 
So I do think that could be one of the issues, you know, is that style full of permatease? Is it a Noriko wig, uh, a Reese, for instance? That would not be a recommended first style, in my opinion. I would not suggest that as a first style uh, to go with if you've never been a wig wearer before. It's a lot. Reese is a lot. Like, I cannot wear Reese unless I you wear a headband in it. I just, it just grows. And you know, I look like a pineapple after a while, but I love the cut and the style and it looks adorable in some hair accessories. So don't count that style out that you are loving the color of and you just, but you feel a little overwhelmed um, because there are things that you can do to make it tolerable and you can eventually grow into that wig feeling mentally okay it's i'm starting to get used to this you have to get in there and 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 immediately break up the part because usually a new wig will come with sort of crisscross part once you have gotten to the point where you're just not going to return it break that part up get those fibers just off the cap either use your fingers or use a pick like this and really just mess it up. Mess it up and get some hairspray and then just start sort of parting it where you normally would and you know, just finger style it. Get in there. Don't be afraid to use some styling products and definitely don't be afraid to move those fibers around. But that is key, you guys. You have to be okay with messing that up, making it a, a mess before you start making it better. Tuck it behind your ear, do what you have to do, play with it. And rate right when you think I'm only used to having a left side part, try it on the right side. Certain styles, they look better one way or the other, and I don't know why, but um, sometimes if I'm really struggling with a wig on this side, which is my regular side that I like, I will just start you know, taking it over to the other side and lo and behold, it just wants to behave better there. It's all about playing with it, experimenting and having fun. So you've got, you've got the wig and um, you're gonna keep this one. So what can you do then to make it feel more comfortable? Well, so you, you shook it out and you put it back on you've messed it up and you've gotten rid of that crisscross part and you've worked it up off the cap and the fibers are you know definitely not smashed anymore and um you still are like i i, I think this might be okay but i would never wear this out yet get yourself something like this okay these are beautiful appropriate for any age and i happen to love these little headbands here these are square band headbands they look like sunglasses almost when you got them on and they're comfortable. They have sort of this silicone sort of uh, padding here at the end. They're comfortable, you can wear your glasses still. I get mine with some sort of bling, bling here on the side. If you've watched any of my wig chats, you may have seen me wear these a lot and talk about them. But these have been a lifesaver for me. You guys, I still get wigs that I get on my head and I do all those things with, and I'm like, I feel real wiggy in this. Then I'll start using one of these. And it makes me feel like, okay, all right, this looks cute. I feel like it's, it's kind of help tame, whatever it is my eye is not dealing with at the moment. And these have gotten me through to where either I finally am sort of starting to grow into liking the style and slowly but surely I don't need to wear this anymore. Maybe I'll experiment with kind of clipping it a little bit. There are some wigs that I have to put something in before I'll feel comfortable wearing them. Whether it's clipping it, whether it's using a headband or a little side something, there are just some wigs that I just have to do that with. So get yourself some hair accessories you would be surprised at how that will help you and your eye to get used to it. First and foremost, the thing you need to realize is that you have been without probably a, a full head of hair in a long time or your whole life you've always had fine thin hair and it's just getting finer and thinner. Keep that in mind. You're now putting a full head of hair on 
and your eye is going, uh-uh, uh-uh. It's not used to seeing you with a regular natural head of hair, like a lot of people have out there. And keep in mind that your family and friends aren't either. So, so remember that, you know, if they give you weird looks, your family will probably be the most honest with you and they'll be like, oh no, oh no, mom. Well, you know, I, you know, if you've crossed all of those other things that we talked about off the list, then it could be that it's gonna take them some time too to get used to seeing you in our head of hair and just give it some time, don't give up. These are a lifesaver, they really are. Um, I can wear one wig, I can wear the same wig on the separate days and one day I'm totally fine with it. I can put it on another time and I'm like, no. And then I'll put something like this in it and I'll be like, okay, I feel better in it. And then I'll put it back on a different day and I'm like, oh, okay, you know, I'll just tuck it behind my ear and I'm good. Uh, you know, I can really teeter-totter from style to style and what I am feeling with it at the time and, you know, versus other days. So, you know, keep that in mind too. There's going to be days when you're going to feel like you're wigging in just about everything you put on your head. I do. So that's where this comes in handy or some sort of pretty uh, clip accessory or something like that. If you're 70, 80, whatever, these are still very cute and I think they're tasteful. Um, again, it just kind of, especially profile, it just look like you kind of put your sunglasses up on your head. I think they're adorable. I'll put a discount code also for these down in the description box. They've given me the discount code Jill and you will get 25% off every single order forever with my discount code. I think that is so generous. So please take advantage of that. So don't be afraid to play with it. Don't be afraid to start experimenting with hair accessories uh, just to get you through or that particular wig is just always gonna look and feel better on you with a little something in it and that's okay. I'm gonna be doing a separate video on ways you can get your wig to look natural. I'm gonna quickly go through it, however, as part of this video, because it is part of getting through and realizing that you can start keeping some of these wigs. You're gonna to want to, on top of you know doing all of those things that we talked about, you're gonna to want to invest in a fill-in powder. Okay, these are root powders that are definitely waterproof, and they're used to basically get you by um, until you can get your hair colored again. They're, they're to cover up the roots that are growing out. And so I use this one called fill-in powder. You definitely will find all different kinds and all different price ranges. This one is probably the most inexpensive one that I found and it works fine. Again, it's waterproof. You don't have to worry about if you sweat where it's gonna start running down. Definitely not gonna do that. Never had that happen. They always come with some sort of stippling brush. This brand comes with one that looks like this. And I've already used my fill-in powder. I'm very mousy brown, very gray through here. And my hair grows out all the way to here, all the way to here. You'd never see it unless I put some fill-in powder on it. I find that the dark brown works well for me because all of my blondes are rooted and they're usually rooted a pretty dark-ish color, except for Palm Springs Blonde. That one is, is quite light and I can't get away with using the dark brown with that one. But I have brought out this fill-in powder all the way to here because that's where my hair grows out. And because this is not a lace front, I've pulled out a little of tiniest, the tiniest bit of hair, because I don't have much hair right there. Um, and I have put in my fill-in powder. And then you're gonna take your finger and you're gonna soften the edges. That goes a hugely long way into really bringing that illusion up a very big notch. And if you do have a little bit of hair, just pull out the littlest bit. You can, if it's curly and you're wearing a straight style, you can always straighten it a little bit and bring in that fill-in powder if your natural hair doesn't match. That is going to really be an incredible uh, illusion right there. Sometimes, you know, it, it makes me feel so much more secure about wearing my wigs. Say you have no hair, You're, you absolutely do not have any hair, you are bald and you, you don't have any hair to pull out. 
I have seen really great results with still using fill-in powder to create the slightest little bit of shadowing along your hairline, softening the edge, and just doing that sometimes can really, again, beef up that illusion and make you feel like you have a really much more natural hairline. Give it a shot, see if you feel like you're seeing that, and decide if it's something you wanna do. All right, guys, so take a perusal through my new to wig series. You can have them all pop up for you if you go to my homepage here on YouTube. You'll find that little search bar and just type in new to wigs and they'll all come up for you. And I would start watching them. And I would start with the one that says too wiggy because I will talk about many of the things I just did, but it'll reiterate all of that again. It's just a great series of videos to watch if you're thinking about becoming a wig wearer or you've just started. All right, guys, until the next video, take care of yourself, be safe, and always stay young at heart. Thank you for watching.